What's up, peeps? We're back. As always, I'm your host, Lee Benson. Thank you for joining us for our newest edition of the AEW Insider. As always, like I said, when AEW has a big pay-per-view, you know your man's going to be here giving his thoughts and his opinions, and I'm going to hold it down. This was a huge week for wrestling. I wanted to cover everything. Besides WWE, there was a ton more, but I really wanted to do Clash at the Castle, NXT's pay-per-view. There just isn't enough time in the day, so I do apologize. But like I said, I am here for All Out. So the main show does kick off at 8 p.m. Eastern Time this Sunday, with a pre-show starting an hour before that. Now this show is stacked. I mean, there's three matches on a pre-show alone, and who knows how many on the main show. It's going to be a long night, but an amazing fun night of pro wrestling. So let's go. Kicking it off, we do have Pac vs. Kip Sabian. Now, I am excited for this match. I'm a fan of both of these guys. I'm glad that Kip is back, but damn, he had to be really hurt. He was out a very long time. We all know that Pac is a beast and a legit machine. So where Kip is out on the card right now status-wise, there's no way he's going to take that title off of Pac. I do see a squash match coming, but I hope Kip does well enough that it's going to propel him for his return. He deserves a good push, but I mean the win is going to be Pac. Next up, we have the FTW Championship up for grabs, which is my dog Hook. Versus Cool Hand Angelo Parker. I mean, is it even a question who's going to win this? But for real, I loved and loved 2.0. I love Menard. I love Cool Hand and It just sucks that they're not killing it in the tag division while being a part of the JAS. They should be in the running for the tag titles, if not champions by now. But like I said, we all know how this is going to end. And it's going to go to hashtag send hook. And finally, on the pre-show, we do have Eddie Kingston versus Ishii. Now, this match is going to be good, but it stinks that Eddie is on a pre-show. It probably has to do with his altercation backstage he got into with Sammy Guevara. Him and Sammy were supposed to be fighting on this pay-per-view, yet here we are. Let's hope we see that one in the future. The way that TK books Kingston is going to be telling of how he feels about him and how he's going to move him forward. If he loses this match... TK behind the scenes definitely still might not be happy with Eddie Kingston. So we're going to have to see how it goes. But if you ask me, Kingston's going to take this one. Now moving on to the main show. First up, we have the House of Black versus Darby Allin, Sting, and Miro. Now this match is going to be awesome. House of Black is legit an amazing dream stable. They've had some great single matches on their own, but when they all team up, they lose more than they win, which is fucked up, and they're definitely not getting their proper dues. That's probably why we all seen that Malachi Black asked Tony Khan for his release. He was denied, but they're supposed to be wanting to kiss his ass and give it everything that he's looking for, which they should, because that dude is a huge talent, and his stable is fucking awesome. I mean, really, Brody King, fucking Buddy Murphy... All machines. I mean, you got the big, the small, the machine. I mean, please. It's like fucking the radicals back in WWE back in the day. Give them what they want. Then you have Darby Allen, Sting, and that beast Miro. This is going to be a hard-hitting bout. On the usual, you would go for the good guys. But after that loss to the Dark Order that the House of Black took, I don't see them losing. I think House of Black should win as a bit of redemption. So I'm going with the House of Black. Next up, we have Ricky Starks vs. Powerhouse Hobbs. Now, I'm excited for this match also. You're going to hear me using this word excited a lot for this pay-per-view because I'm excited for this pay-per-view and I'm excited for the matches that are going to make it up. But this match is a double-edged sword, man. I mean, these two were so fucking good together. They were tight, tight like brothers. Ricky Starks has been killing it in the ring and in promos. The dude's a star. Ever since I seen him for the first time in NWA, I knew he was a star. Now, Hobb is a beast and deserves his proper push. It just sucks it comes to beating Ricky. Like I said, do you think Ricky would win this because he needs his redemption? He's been done dirty, blah, blah, blah. But it is what it is. Hobbs needs a bigger push right now as he deserves. He's going to be a machine. He's going to be a beast. He's going to be up there with Warlow. Goldberg, Mark Henry, people like that. So you got to go with fucking Hobbs. 
We also have Christian Cage vs. Jungle Boy. This match is gonna be crazy. Such a great build-up, which TK is amazing at. With Christian being Jungle Boy's mentor, then turning on him, he officially attacked his family members verbally, and also almost took his best friend away from him. Like, I want to go for Jungle Boy, but I love heels. I should go for Jungle Boy, but I think Christian might win this. Might even win it with the help of Luchasaurus at that. That's right, where's Luchasaurus been? He went with Christian, week later he went back with Jungle Boy, they were building him up as this big fucking beast, which he is, bad guy character, which would be awesome, darker, just destroying people, and then boom, he vanished. Why did he vanish? Maybe to come back and interfere in this match, act like he's going to help his boy Jungle Boy, he actually is going to help Christian, Christian's going to get the win, and then Christian and Luchasaurus once again could go Terran. So I gotta go with Christian on this one. We have Warlow and FTR versus Jay Leto, Chris Sabian, and Alex Shelley, a.k.a. the Motor City Machine Guns. Now the fucking Motor City Machine Guns, they're awesome. They're one of my all-time favorite tag teams. I love me some FTR, I love me some Warlow too, but after we've seen on Rampage tonight, I don't know where this is gonna go. You think it'll be a good fan match? You gotta let FTR and everybody's fucking favorite Warlow win to keep the show moving on, keep the momentum going. But why bring Motor City Machine Guns into this to lose? It just makes no sense. I actually hope they stick around and they stop playing Jay Lethal too, because Jay Lethal's my dog. They've been playing him since they fucking signed him. But it's bullshit. I'm going with the underdogs on this one. I think the winners are gonna be Lethal and a Motor City Machine Gun. And I hope this isn't just a one and done and the Motor City Machine Guns are going to be here for a while. We have the TBS Championship up for grabs, which is Jade Cargrill versus Adina. I mean, Jade's been killing it. She's like 30-something and oh. Maybe she even hit 40. I don't know. I think she's 30-something and oh. And then you got Adina. Ember Moon was really cool when she started in the WWE. She faded out quick as fuck. She's injury prone. I mean, really. Who do you think's going to win? I don't think who's going to win this match is even a fucking question. I mean, really, peeps. Your winner, Jay Cargrill. Done. We also have the ladder match for the AEW Championship shot. Normally, this match would be held on a pre-show, but obviously it propelled so far to having it in the main show, which is awesome. So we got Claudio versus Ray Phoenix versus Roosh versus Dante Martin versus Andrade versus Penter Versus Willa Yuta and a mystery opponent. Now this match is literally going to tear the roof off the fucking building. All of the high flying, hard hitting talent. It's going to be just crazy. You got a mix of everything. Plus a mystery opponent. Is it going to be an ex WWE star or somebody from the indies? Will it be Dante Martin's injured brother returning? Who knows? This match is impossible to call because you don't know everybody who's going to be in it. So I'm just going to go throw a name out there or two. And you got to keep an eye on this match because it definitely could steal the match of the night. So my picks from what I know right now is either going to be Dante Martin or Andrade. We also have the AEW World Trios Championship up for grabs. Whoever wins this is going to be the first ever AEW Trios Champions. We have my dog Kenny Omega and my other dogs the Young Bucks versus the Dark Order. This match is probably going to be one of my favorites of the night, if not my favorite. I had to wait until Rampage tonight to finish this video. If not, it would have been out sooner, so I apologize. But I have been a huge Dark Order mark since day one, and I was hoping they would win to move on, and after tonight, guess what? They did. I do love the best friends also, but don't get a fucked up. But going back to the Dark Order, Alex Reynolds is a beast in the ring. Saw him last year at Grand Slam and he killed it. I cannot wait until the end of this month when we do Grand Slam again. Johnny Hungy, he's the man also. I'm not a huge fan of Hangman Page at all, but it is what it is. I kept saying and thought it would be the Elite 
for his cold and red dragon. But we see what's going on with all that with Bobby Fish asking for his release from the company and or not getting re-signed. He was talking smack on this podcast. Didn't like the way he was booked. And TK was like, see ya. And now Riley and Cole are still not 100%. But those alone are just awesome. It just sucks. It's not going to be the undisputed. Even though they didn't have Roddy when he had Cole and Red Dragon, it was fucking awesome. I'm glad the Dark Order is still here and prominent as of right now after their releases. We lost Angel. We lost Grayson. It fucking sucks. They were both the bomb. But it looks like Angels might be sending back. We'll have to see how that ends up. Omega, while injured, said he would love to come back for the trio's titles, and he did. So we were just going to go through the motions, Pete. We already know who the first ever AEW trio's title champions will be, and that's going to be the Bucks and Omega. And like I said, it was already enough a stack card the way it was. Now, after tonight at Rampage, we have Sammy Guevara and Tay versus Ruby Soho and Santana again. I mean, it's been a cool feud. I love Sammy. I love Tay because people hate him so much that makes you love them. But how many times have we seen this match now? At least two, maybe three. We don't want another WWE fucking rehash here. But, I mean, the way it's been going, Sammy and Tay's been winning, who which I would normally go for. Ruby and Santana have to win this one. There's no way they cannot win. I'm still going with Sammy and Tay, but the winners are going to be Ruby and Santana. We have the AEW Tag Team Championship up for grabs, which is Swerve in My Glory, which was a cool name at first, but now it's just corny to me, versus The Acclaim. I'm so glad The Acclaim is getting their dues. Their record since AEW started has always been awesome. They've always been in the running for the tag team titles. They just never got their shot. But those two are super fun to watch and they're super talented. I would love for them to win the titles. Keith Lee and Swerve team up is great because you know what I mean? It's the opposite. Alpha 2 Omega, opposites of track, what have you. But their tag title run has been lackluster so far. Everybody's going to go for Lee and Swerve, but you know me. I like to go for the underdog, so my picks to win this is the acclaim. We have the AEW Women's Championship up for grabs, which is Tony Storm vs. Hare vs. Sheeta vs. Britt Baker. Now this match is going to be fun. It sucks what happened in Donna Rosa, but like I said before about Swerve of My Glory, her title run was lackluster at most. It is said behind the scenes she was supposed to drop her title to Tony Storm, and she was not happy about it. If it's true, if it's not, who knows, but hey, it's out there. And like they say, when there's smoke, there's fire. I don't think she is going to win. So that leaves Baker, Hater, and Storm. I don't think Hater's going to win, even though she will be women's champion in the future. That chick is a fucking beast. I think at the end of the match, Hater and Baker are going to get into it, and that's going to cause them both to lose and Tony Storm to get that title and become the new AEW Women's Champ until Thunder Rosa gets back and they can face off. I think it's way too soon for her to be champ. But as I said, I think Storm will win, but I got to go with Dr. Britt Baker. You can never bet against her. We have Brian Danielson versus La Champion, Chris Jericho. Wow, these two goats going at it, these two are going to kick the living piss out of each other. I am super excited for this match also. Like I said, I said super excited five or seven times during this video alone, but that's how stacked and how good this card is. Everybody's going to be going for Brian Danielson to win, as they should. But I feel that JSA will somehow help Jericho win. You know Garcia is going to get involved. You know he's going to show up. He's going to come out there. He's going to act like he's been torn between Danielson or Jericho. Everybody thinks he's going to go with Danielson. He's going to play to the crowd. Everybody thinks he's going to have his back. But at the end of the day, you know he's going to do Danielson dirty. Help La Champion Chris Jericho get the win, and is going to be part of the JSA, as he should be, and we will all rejoice. My pick, Chris Jericho, a.k.a. La Champion. And finally, we have John Moxley vs. CM Punk. It is finally time for the main event. 
As soon as Punk got fake injured, I said it was fake. I called it. You had to be blind not to call it, but you couldn't tell it by social media. Everybody thought it was real. You sat there and say what I'm about to say. Like, that makes no sense. They're attacking you. They're coming at you. But I said he's going to be back and win his belt in his home state of Chicago at All Out. As I said, people came at me online. They tried to drag me for it. They said what I was saying made no sense. Well, look at where we were at over a little bit of a week later. Mox is a beast. He's one of my faves. He's a hardcore, no-nonsense ass kicker. But this is Punk's time to shine. If he can stay injury-free, he will have a great run like he should have in the first place. This is Punk's time to have his proper run as AEW champ. Chicago is going to go fucking crazy because their prodigal son returned, he gets his dues, and he will become the proper AEW champion again. So I got to go with CM Punk. All right, peeps, that's it. As always, I told you, I'll be back for any big AEW pay-per-views, any big, big, like, crazy news, what have you. As always, thank you so much for showing this channel love. Please, by all means, join our Facebook group. It's under the AEW Insider. It's an amazing group. There's no drama. Nobody attacks each other. Nobody attacks each other for their opinions that they feel. I mean, it's just awesome. I post up-to-date wrestling news, all the hottest news stories and all that every day. It's just hard for me to get time to actually make a video of it. But if you like my content, you like the wrestling news, you want to keep up on wrestling news, go to Facebook right now and join the AEW Insider because our group is awesome. Please show us some love on all social media, including the AEW Insider One on Twitter, as well as many other social media outlets. As always, I'm your host, Lee Bent, and I thank you so much for joining us for our YouTube edition of the AEW Insider. I'll see you at the next pay-per-view, peeps. Ciao.